So in this video, we're going to take a look at how to order prints online. A bit of a guidance through this topic, which um, which can be quite interesting, can be, can be quite messy. Um, so uh, yeah, how to order prints online. So things we're going to cover in this um, in this little video are calibrating your screen, using printer profiles, which service to use. There's loads of them out there. So which one is the best to use? Um, and then uploading and, and actually doing the printing process. So we're going to start with the first thing: calibrating your screen. And um, this is this is not an option. You've got to do this you must calibrate your screen if you want to get a good quality um, print at the other end because obviously um, when, when you buy your screen um, it, it'll be set up you'll change that to your own preferences you'll change the brightness you might change the saturation when you buy a new screen the, well, the saturation and the and the brightness will be quite high anyway and if you print that or send it to somebody else they're going to be looking at that image and it's not going to be the same as it looks on your monitor so the key thing is calibrate your screen I mean if you send an image to a printer um, and, and they've got their their system calibrated differently to yours you get when you get that print back it is going to look very very different and you will not be happy with it likewise if you send a, a, an image to a colleague or a, a, another photographer to, to look at um, you know they've probably got their screen mark, uh, calibrated already so you'll need to make sure that um, that your screen is calibrated in, in this in the same way. Uh, finally, if you enter a, a competition through a camera club, um, then you will find that their judging systems are calibrated, um, and that gives everybody the consistency that uh, that they that, that you need when uh, when entering competitions. So I would recommend that you calibrate your system, your screen, so that when you send an image to to a competition or to anybody else, they are looking at the image in the same way that you're looking at the images. They're looking at the same colours. They're looking at the same brightness and and it's going to be the same image basically. Um, so to do this, you're going to need to purchase a calibration device um, such as a Color Monkey or a Spider. These are little tools that sit on the front of your screen. Um, uh, on, only when you're doing the calibration, not all the time. Um, it, it basically sits on the front of the screen and the screen flashes a whole bunch of colors at it through a little bit of software that you download. And uh, and then the, uh, and the tool will recommend or create a, a monitor calibration for you. These tools can be quite expensive. I think the cheapest one I've seen recently was one of the spider devices that retails about eighty pounds. Um, that's for an entry level unit. Um, and then you can you can really pay what you like. You know, I've seen them way above five hundred pounds, but uh, you know they can go up to five hundred pounds for for a more professional unit. Um, so the thing is, you need to do it quite regularly. The you know, calibration does change slightly over time, so I'd recommend that you uh, you calibrate your screen on a on a fairly regular basis, maybe monthly if you've actually got one. If you if you if you're sharing one with a friend or borrowing one of somebody else, you could probably get away with doing it once every every few months, even a year if things don't change too much. But I would recommend uh, you know monthly to quarterly to uh, to get your screen calibrated. Once you're calibrated, you can start to use uh, profiles um, because profiles are going to be key to actually the printing process. So when you print at home, um, anybody that prints at home will know that they, they download a profile for the printer that they're using, for the paper that they're using, even the ink that they're using. Um, so that when they print, it comes out of the printer in exactly the, the, the same way that, uh, that you expect to see it that's on your screen. Now, when you're printing online, somebody else is doing that printing. Somebody else has got a printer and they've got their printer calibrated and, and through their process. And what you need to do is you need to get your system calibrated in the same way and using the same printer profiles as they are so that when you send an image, you are going to get that image back in a way that is consistent with your thought process and it is exactly what you expect. So the way to do this is to get a, get a printer profile. And most of the... Um, the, 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 the more professional um, printers um, will have uh, profiles available to download from their website. And we'll talk about that and we'll look at that process in a few moments. Um, and to install that process on a Mac, you dump it in a folder called um, HD, uh, Macintosh HD, uh, Library, or Sync Profiles. There's, 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 the, there's, the, there's the path. We'll, we'll look at that in a few minutes, doing, doing that in, in, in real time. Um, and then on Windows, it's even simpler. So right click Install Process. And, and then you've got to apply that photograph to that profile to your photograph. And that's, and, that, and that's critical. If you don't do that, you've wasted all your steps. Um, and we'll take a look at how to do that on the Mac and on the, uh, on the PC right now. 
So we're here on um, on the website now, and this is on a, we're also on a, a Windows PC. This is Windows 10, and uh, we're on a website here for Deer Scholar Labs, uh, which is a printer that I use quite regularly. And uh, what we're going to do is get the profile. So normally on profiles, they'll be somewhere around. Um, I, I know where they are on here. They're in they're in the tech support area. Um, so if we go to tech support and then scroll down a little bit, then uh, there we, here we have our, our paper profile. So if we're, we're asking them to print on, on metallic paper, then what we need to do is just click on that. And, uh, and then we'll see down in the bottom left corner here, there's our metallic paper profile. So if I just uh, remove that, go into our downloads, uh, which are here. Um, and then I right click that, oh, click it, right click it, install profile. And really, installing the profile is that easy on a Windows PC. So that profile is now is now stored. Uh, if I if we go into Photoshop, I've got Photoshop here, and uh, open an image. There's uh, there's an image in Photoshop, and uh, to apply that profile onto this image, all we have to do is go to Edit. And then down the bottom here is a section on colors. Um, we do not want to assign the profile. We want to convert this image to that profile. Click on convert. In the profile, we just click the little option button and it all falls down. And then we have a bit of a scoot through here. We should see, there it is. There's the one we just downloaded. DS Color Labs Kodak Metallic, click. Don't worry about any other options. Click OK, and that's it. Our image has now got that profile. So when we save this as a JPEG, that profile for that printer and that paper will be stored in that image, and it will look exactly as we expect it to do when it comes back to us. So that's how to do it on a Windows device. Now let's have a look at a Mac. So now we're on the Mac. Um, so we're using, uh, I don't know what this is. This is Chrome on the Mac. Um, so we're going to go to the same place on the website. We're going to go to technical support. And we're going to scroll down a bit and find our papers. Where are we? There they are. And I'm going to just go for the Fuji glossy paper. There we go. So we'll click that and we'll see once again, it's downloaded into the um, bottom of the, of, the, of the screen there. So I'm going to close that now, go back to my um, screen and we can see here that in our downloads folder there is our, uh, our download of that profile so over here we need to go to the uh, appropriate folder which uh, if you can remember from a few moments ago was Macintosh HD so there's, there's Macintosh HD um, into library and then from library we're going to go to color sync and then color sync we're going to go into profiles and here's a profile I've already got installed and on a Mac all we need to do is drag it from one finder window to another finder window um, we probably need to authenticate that and then there we go so and if we go to uh, Photoshop now uh, where's Photoshop here's Photoshop and um, we'll just open a previous image then once again uh, to, to get that profile working on this image we go to edit and then we go to, oh, they've moved it. Oh, there, there it is. <laughs> Couldn't see it for a second. Uh, convert to profile. We're not doing a sign. We are doing convert to profile. And then when we click on here, we'll see uh, these are all the profiles I've got installed on this computer. Obviously, this is the main one I use for printing. Um, there we go. DC Color Labs Frontier Glossy. And we'll apply that. And that's it done so that's how to do it on a Mac okay so now we've, uh, we've we've got our profile done and we've got our image all sorted out now we need to work out so where we're going to send it what who which service are we going to use because there are literally thousands of them you search the internet you'll get hundreds and hundreds of, of, uh, of, of uh, Google responses for people wanting you know, claiming they can print your your pictures for you professionally you can also take a walk down the high street there's loads of places on the high street that uh, that can print uh, images for you as well um, and in supermarkets these days any anybody can print so how do you how do you go about navigating this this uh, this market and working out who you're going to use well first of all, I would not use a printer that does not provide you with a printer profile. Um, so that printer profile, the process we've just gone through, 
that ensures that what you're sending is going to get printed correctly and come back to you in a manner that you expect. So do not use anybody, my recommendation, that does not offer printer profiles. Secondly, a lot of these companies offer a whole bunch of, um, of, of things that you can buy. But quite often, a lot of these are mugs and key rings and mouse mats and all sorts of other things. And when it comes down to the paper and, and, the, and the photography itself, the paper options quite quite limited some people you know maybe a gloss maybe a mat and that's your lot um, so you want to you want to pick a supplier that, that really focuses on printing paper and uh, and they've got a good range of paper options many of them will have uh, you know you know five six seven eight nine twenty thirty different paper options um, and some of the papers will be from companies you you, you know photo speed or from permajet so uh, you know Get a company, use a company that's got good paper options because that, that once again gives you that quality and helps you have a really good image on a, on a paper that you expect, a paper that you like, rather than just stuck with the, the standard gloss or matte options that, that, that some companies will offer you. High street storage, generally not suitable for serious photography. Um, yes, they're great for, um, for your holiday snaps, for, uh, for taking pictures off your phone and, and printing them. Uh, and, and they are and they are fantastic for that sort of stuff. Really, sort of quick and easy, low, low quality uh, images. But they haven't got the the ability in general. There are, I've, I have seen others uh, that have uh, very good things on the high street. But in general, um, you know, you get what you get. The, the colours maybe not that accurate. The saturation of the colours may be a little bit wrong. The contrast, the gamma, all sorts of stuff will be will be a little bit off, and uh, you may not get exactly what you're expecting. You get the paper that they give you as well, so you really don't have those wide choice of options. Um, so I would really go for uh, more more of a professional photography printers. Now, personally, um, you don't need to listen to this bit, but personally, I recommend DS Color Lab and Stockport. They 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 have all of the above uh, things that I've spoken about. Great paper options. Um, you can download their profiles. They print to a whole range of papers. Um, they do um, all different sizes. Uh, their quality is fantastic, uh, in my experience, and the service is really good. So that's uh, that's somebody I would uh, always always look at. So when it comes down to uploading and printing, um, you know when you when you actually upload an, an, an image to a file to a to a supplier, you've got to make sure that it's it's a good quality image. Um, there is a bit of a rule of thumb, um, and, and it focuses around through the DPI that uh, you know you should have enough pixels to be able to print your image at 300 DPI. So if you've got an 8 by 10 print, um, times each of those numbers, 8 and the 10 by 300, um, and that's the size of the image that you should be sending through. To, in this case, uh, 2400 by 3000. Uh, anything less than that, and it's starting to make up pixels that don't exist, and you can start to just lose a little bit of quality there. Um, always best really to send the, the highest resolution image you've got but as a minimum you should be looking at that now most suppliers most of the websites that you use uh, will tell you that uh, that your image is not of a sufficient quality to print if you take a, I don't know, a two megapixel image and, uh, and and try and upload that and print it at uh, a3 you may well get a warning that says you know this this image is, is not a very good quality so are you sure you want to print it um, and they'll normally warn you of that um, so you know, take heed, read those notices. If you've not got uh, not got a, a sufficient resolution or image, see if you've got another version of the same image that, that is a better resolution, or export it again from Photoshop or whatever, um, just to get that uh, get that quality in your image. Finally, postage costs. You know, postage can be expensive. You you will typically pay you know three, four, five, six pounds to to have a a, a, a print sent to you by by mail. Um, so if you can do a batch of them and send send sort of six, seven, eight, nine, ten pictures at, at once, even more, then obviously it's going to bring your uh, your net postage cost down a little bit rather than doing them one at a time. Uh, so they're the things to consider. I mean, I, I print at home, I print online as well. What I find is printing at home can be more expensive, believe it or not, because yes, you still get your paper costs, but also it's easier to print it again. So if you print your image and you go, oh, I didn't do that quite right, or I just want to change this, or I just want to clone that little bit out, or I just want to change this little thing on the image, you're printed again. And what I find is uh, at home, because it's easy just to hit print, uh, you may well hit print three or four times before you actually get an image that you want. Whereas when you're sending that image online to get printed, 
you take a better look at that image before you send it and you're you're generally more comfortable with the image before you send it off to be printed and going yeah I have a critical view of that, view, uh, that picture and I'm happy for it to go and uh, you tend to get it right first time uh, so I, my view is uh, it can be actually cheaper if you haven't got a printer at home uh, so that's my um, in a nutshell how I would recommend online printing um, thanks for watching